Watching this video is going to give you guys a framework for saving somebody's life or your own life. And two big objections a lot of people are probably going to have are, I already have a first aid kit. Well, number one, let me tell you, it's probably garbage and it won't do anything. And the next objection is, I don't have the skills to save somebody's life. And I will say to you, you definitely do. It's not that hard to learn. And I'm going to lay out everything you need to do to be able to take care of somebody in a wilderness scenario and be able to have a first aid kit in your photography or your hiking backpack so you can do that and you'll have confidence in yourself. So I'm going to go over my hiking med kit. And this is the kit that I carry anytime I go out on a photography trip, anytime I go backpacking, anytime I go hiking. It's very small, it's condensed, and it's very versatile, meaning I only have the things that I really need or that's really gonna save somebody's life. A lot of these medical kits that you can get at REI or on Amazon that's a pre-made medical kit, they do absolutely nothing. They're a waste of money. There's nothing in there that's actually going to save somebody's life in most scenarios. So build your own get something that's good and you trust and you know where things are in the kit and then you have the training to use. So the number one thing, I have a checklist down below this video. It has all the gear that I have in these med kits. And then if you really wanna go big, which I recommend everybody do, start small and then have a kit for your house. This is my house kit. You can see it's way bigger than this kit because it has a lot more stuff that I might need and it's also for a lot longer period of time. And then I have another kit just like this that's in my vehicle and it's slightly slimmed down version of this. So I'm not gonna go through this kit today, but I will go through the backcountry wilderness kit. So there's two different things you need to know to start things out. Number one, if you're going hiking or going anywhere where an ambulance is not within an hour or two from you, you need to have wilderness first responder training, meaning you need to be able to stop a big bleed that somebody might have. To do that, you use a, something called a tourniquet. Tourniquets wrap around limbs and they stop the blood flow from your heart to a big wound that might be on one of your limbs so you can bleed out. A tourniquet is the most important thing you can have that hardly anybody has in their kit. You can have the best first aid kit in the world, but something that is a big wound that you're gonna bleed out from is what most people are gonna die from quickly. And if an ambulance can't get there in five minutes, which it never can, then you need to have a tourniquet. So the two most important things you can take away from this video, get a tourniquet and learn how to use it don't get a knockoff cheap tourniquet on Amazon. A good tourniquet's about $35. North American Rescue website has a lot of these you can choose from, so it's just standard tourniquet. And then have backups of your tourniquet for each kit. Now, when I go backpacking, I only carry one tourniquet because they're kind of heavy to carry backpacking. But in my home kit, I have two tourniquets because if one of them fails on you, you need to have a backup. Or if you have two limbs that have big bleeds on them, you need to have a backup. And you guys can go on YouTube and Google how to use a tourniquet, and it'll show you. They're very simple to use. So tourniquet's great. I have one for my backpacking kit. The other thing that can really save somebody's life is a chest seal. So these are seals that are adhesive, and you smack them onto a wound. So let's say you have a deep penetrating wound, like a gunshot wound, or a stick. Let's say you fall in the backcountry, and a stick goes through your entire chest. There's no way to stop this without a chest seal. So these are very light and small. And there's two of them and they also have vents in them. So what happens when you have a huge puncture wound is all the blood and potentially air from your lungs tries to come out of it. And you need to have these little seals on them so some of the blood can come out and the blood doesn't stay in your body and mess up the rest of your organs. So chest seals are like $15. They come in two packs. You can get these from North American Rescue as well. If you're gonna get anything for your first aid kit, even if you have a pre-made kit, add this to it, at least two chest seals and at least two tourniquets. If you haven't had any first aid training, go get a three day weekend first aid training. It's pretty cheap, like 300 bucks. You can get it from Knowles, N-O-L-S.com. They have them at REI and stuff like that. But if you really want to have the expertise, do a wilderness first responder course. This wilderness first responder course is 10 days and then you have to recertify every two years but it really teaches you how to take care of people in backcountry scenarios where medical help's not gonna be there for the next few days. So this is the first thing I have. Now you need to have the training for this. This is a little pocket guide and it walks you through the steps of what to do when you first arrive on a scene. So you'll practice this a whole lot when you do first aid training, but when you have it, you can easily reference it when you're doing patient help or whenever you're helping a patient in the backcountry and having a step-by-step -step checklist when you're in stressful scenarios it's going to take a lot of the stuff off of your brain so you can problem solve in the moment. So I have these linked in that checklist. All this stuff's linked in the checklist. So the first thing I have 
is gloves. Most people don't have enough gloves. Carry 15 to 20 pairs of gloves. You'll need to use gloves anytime you deal with a patient. And if you have somebody that's hurt in the back country and you have to first repair their wound, get them stabilized. But then if you have to wait for a helicopter or something to come get you, it might be a few days. And every time you care for their wound or their injury, you're going to need to put gloves on. So have a lot of pair of gloves. Once in a while, they'll break too. I recommend 15 to 20 pairs. And for my checklist that I have down below this video, I have the number of pairs that I carry for each of these different kits. So it's all itemized. The next thing that's very important that most first aid kits don't have is gauze. These are just gauze rolls. The most important reason to have these gauze rolls is not for wrapping it around a wound. It's for taking the gauze and smashing it up and putting it into a deep puncture or a big gouge in the body. So these chest vents are great for bullet wound, puncture wound through the whole body. But if you have a large gaping gouge, this is not going to do it. Say a knife wound or something like that. So you need to fill that gouge. And obviously you want to go do your own research and do your own training on yourself. But you want to take these gauze rolls and you want to fill that big gouge to stop the bleeding. So you need to have a good bit of these. I would recommend four for a backpacking kit. And I don't use these to repair the wound generally. I use a different type of gauze for that. But you need to be able to stop the wound. And you can't just put a shirt and a big gouge to stop the bleeding. The second thing you have to do after you stop the blood. No matter what, the first thing you're always going to do is stop the bleeding. You can reference this little thing as you go through. The first thing you always check is life threats. So airway and breathing. You want to check in the mouth to see if the person's gagging on something. If they are, get it out of there. You want to check circulation, meaning... Is there blood coming out of their body somewhere? What's their pulse? How's their body look? And if there's blood, you want to stop it immediately before you try to determine what else is going on. So having a big bleed kit, tourniquets, chest seals, and gauze is great to have. So once you stop that blood, you have decision on disability. I'm just going off this little life threats checklist here. And you need to determine what's going on with the person or try to deduct what's going on with the person. So if you have a big wound, that's probably something that's going on with them, but they might have also hit their head. There might be many other internal things that you can't see. So you have to become a detective when you're doing this stuff because you're the only person there. And what's nice about learning all these medical skills is you can use it if there's a car crash. You can use it if there's a grid down scenario like a natural disaster. Many other things, you can be the person that saves somebody's life. But what I've also found is really good about this is I do a lot of backpacking on my own. And if I get hurt or if I don't feel good, I can determine from my medical training if it's something to be worried about or if it's something that I can just wait and see what happens and I don't have to evacuate. So if you're not feeling good and something's actually bad, it might be important that you evacuate right away. But if something's actually not that bad and it can wait a little bit, it would actually be dangerous to evacuate right away if you have to hike out. So knowing these things can give you a peace of mind. So the next thing I have is cleaning. I just label all this stuff right here. So... This is my cleaning kit, and in it I just have a few different things. Number one is alcohol prep pads. So these are just little alcohol prep pads. They're good for cleaning around the outside of a wound, so you can have adhesion with tape. They're good for cleaning any very small wounds on your body. Then I have liquid iodine. You can keep a big bottle of this at your house, or they make like 8-ounce bottles. This is also great for wound care. And then this is something that never comes in pre-made kits, and it's a syringe. But what's very important with syringes is that they need to have this very small tip on them. And what you can do with a syringe is you can take clean water. So I just have water cleaning tabs if I'm in the backcountry. But you'll want to take prepared and clean water, take this. And with a wound, especially like a punct small puncture wound or a gouge, you can just take clean water and run it through this. And this creates pressure because the tip's so small and it can clean anything out of that wound that might be bad. Now it's not gonna clean everything out of it. So you just still need to cover and take care of the wound. But having these little pressure syringes is essential. And you can get these on the Knowles website. I have these linked in my guide as well. And then along with that, I also have Neosporin. Now Neosporin can be great. It's not gonna solve all life's problems. If you get into a really hairy scenario at my house, if you have somebody that's a connection that is in the medical field and you have medical training, it's good to get some really good antibacterial ointment. This stuff's awesome. And you can check that out as well if you're a doctor or a medical professional. 
you can have some really good ointment. This is like 100x what Neosporin will do, but Neosporin still works very well. And that's just going to take all the bacteria, any nasty stuff out of the wound and keep it stable. So those are good to have. I don't take this one in the backcountry with me. And that's the hard thing about getting a wilderness kit set up for the backcountry. Without training, it's very hard to determine the minimum amount of stuff you need without carrying a massive kit because you can never carry this into the backcountry. So the next thing I have here is a whole, another little storage area under here. So we'll go through that stuff. I carry N95 mask for fire. If you get into a scenario where there's fire, then an N95 mask can save your life. That's always good to have in the kit. And then I have meds. So I have a lot of different meds here and a mix of prescription medications and then regular over-the-counter medications. So I just have these labeled differently. I'm not gonna go into the prescription medications. If you have the ability to get prescription medications on your own, you should know which ones you'll need. I have a list of them in the checklist, which is good to have. You can also get the Knowles book that goes along with this and you can put it on your Kindle or your phone. It's great to take out with you. I also keep the hard copy in my house and that can give you an idea. But let's go over the non-prescription medications that I carry here. Number one thing that's really good to have is caffeine pills. These are 200 milligram caffeine pills. If you're this person that has to rescue somebody and it's late at night and you need to stay up for long hours to make precise decisions on what you can do, these are great because it's better to be jacked up on caffeine even though you're tired and be able to make clear decisions than just be tired and not know what's going on. So caffeine pills are great to have in your kit. Then standard painkillers, ibuprofen, 200 milligrams, Aleve, these are all NSAIDs, not great for you. Don't take them every day. Even if you have a little ache and pain, I would not recommend taking these. Aleve is just like a longer lasting ibuprofen. Ibuprofen lasts for a few hours. Aleve, it lasts for eight to 10 hours. So it's just a little bit longer lasting. And then you have aspirin, 325 milligrams. When you get medical training, you'll notice the first thing that they teach you, if you're suspecting that somebody has a heart attack, aspirin, one pill of 325 milligrams is the first thing that you can give them. Now obviously get medical training so you know when and how to do this. And then I have acetaminophen, which is not an NSAID, it's 500 milligram. I would say out of all the painkillers, this is probably the best for you, but none of these are really good for you. But if you're in a lot of pain, you'll need to take these. And you can also layer these up together if you have really bad pain. They'll teach you how to do that in your wilderness training. And then the other thing I have here is a few things for different colds. So I have zinc. 50 milligrams. If you get a cold out in the back country, you feel a cold starting to come on. Taking 50 milligrams of zinc every day really helps me out. Now you obviously want to look if you're allergic to things, but this is all stuff that I take for myself. So you can do the research on your own. The other thing is vitamin C, 500 milligrams. I'll take one of these every few hours if I feel a cold starting to come on. So they're good to have in your first aid kit. The other stuff I have here is prescription medication that can be good for Anything where you have very deep puncture wounds or very bad stomach virus or something like that, they're in the checklist, but I'm not going to cover them because I'm not a doctor, so I don't have the right to tell you guys about prescriptions. I feel like that's unethical for me to do. So you guys can do the research for that on your own. The other over-the-counter stuff I have is Imodium. So Imodium is great. It's anti-diarrhea. If you get sick, Imodium is good to have. So I have two packets of that. You wanna have basically like eight days of this stuff if you're going out for a week backpacking trip. Next thing I have is Benadryl. Benadryl is great if you have, let's let's say you just get like uh, poison ivy or something, or you're having an allergic reaction, or you're really sick and you can't sleep well. Benadryl can be great for assisting you in those different things. The other thing I have is for, uh, it's called dio Diotame. Um, this is good if you have like, stomach acid or you have really upset stomach, something like that, and it just won't go away. Tums can work well too, but Tums are a lot heavier, so I don't carry them in the back country. So that covers my whole meds kit. And you'll see that my meds kit is not that big besides the prescription stuff. So just get eight days worth of all these things once you have your wilderness training and just pack it into your kit and always leave it there. And when you come home from a trip, if you use the stuff, make sure you reload it into your kit. The next thing to have is an emergency blanket. After you stabilize the patient, 
emergency blankets great to put them on their sleeping bag in their sleeping bag on their sleeping pad and put this emergency blanket over them to keep them warm and stabilized and then i have this dyneema cord 50 feet this can be great if you need to make a splint so if somebody gets a broken leg some people like to try to use a tree or something to make a broken leg better but you can use a trekking pole and then you can also use like a sitting pad or some piece of your sleeping pad and you can roll that around the broken leg and you can splint it using this rope and then you can use some gorilla tape or duct tape as well so this always stays in the kit just dyneema tape and then i just have repair tape so i just back roll this repair tape off the rolls this is gorilla tape this is Tyvek tape. Tyvek tape works great for repairing tents, repairing sleeping pads, anything like that. So it's T-Y-V-E-K. It repairs pack rafts really well too. And then I have Dyneema tape, which is used for repairing small stuff in tents. I just keep this in my emergency kit because I'm always going to need it no matter what. It's good to have access to tape because you never know when you're going to need tape to hold something together. That's different from the medical tape that I would use on actual wounds. We'll cover that here in a second. So the next thing is my tools kit this is just random small assorted tools so soap very small amount of soap i have this so you can find small punctures and sleeping pads so if you get a puncture that you can't find in your sleeping pad put the sleeping pad down blow it up with air and then cover it with soapy water and you'll be able to see the bubbles come up from that so that can work great then i have a needle and thread kit get some heavy duty thread get three needles and I just keep it in a small thing of duct tape so it doesn't poke me so that can be used for gear worst case could be used for a person you don't want to have to do that it's good to have a suture kit in your home kit but I don't care that in my backcountry kit um CPR this is just a CPR mask to go over somebody's face gotta have training for CPR but it's also good to have a little list of how CPR goes so 30 compressions in 18 seconds and you need to train for this obviously then tilt head pinch nose Breathe in, two one-second breaths, and then repeat. But training is essential so you don't break somebody's ribs too badly when you're doing that. Two small Bic lighters. I also keep one lighter in my kit, my food kit at all times, but backup lighters are great to have. I just cut this off, but this is just a shaving razor. If you need to repair somebody, it's hard to get tape to stick on hairy legs or arms or anything else, so you can shave the area off around the wound. Just a little um, pen that can be good for getting like, if you just get something in your hand and you just dig it out, that can be great. Or holding different bandages on. I don't really use it for that. Um, then you can have a little small Swiss Army knife. It just has a knife and a scissor on it. Like I said, all this stuff is included in that checklist. Then I have tweezers. I have a lot nicer tweezers for my home kit, but these are good backcountry tweezers. They're very small, very sharp point on them. And I've tested all this stuff out in the field. It works really well. So just go off that checklist and you guys will be set. And these are carry thermometers. So these are one-time use thermometers to check temperature to see how the patient's doing. You want to take these stats all along the whole way of their different vitals. So you can see if they're trending in good or bad direction. So in the home kit, it's good to just have a regular thermometer. But these small carry thermometers are great to have. So the next thing we'll look at is the repair kit. Now... After you've cleaned the wound and stabilized the patient and stopped any big bleeds, for smaller wounds, you're going to need to be able to repair that wound. For big wounds, it's very hard to repair them out in the field. You just more want to cover them and you want to keep the person stable and make sure the wound's not bleeding too much. But for smaller wounds that are not going to need to be sewed shut by a professional, you need to have a small repair kit for that. So a few different things. First thing I like to keep is this Spartan tape. Spartan tape is just KT tape. It's called just the letters K and T and then tape. It works great for stabilizing knees and ankles, but it also works great if you have blisters on your feet. I've hiked enough that I don't get blisters anymore, but if somebody does have a blister, you can clean it with an alcohol swab and put some KT tape over it. It works really well. And then I have this gauze. This is just flat panels of gauze where this is for like filling big wounds and stopping bleeds, this would be for covering a wound after it's the blood is stopped or once it's just seeping. So to keep it clean and keep it covered up. And then I have all these small things. Now you'll notice most of this stuff, they don't 
include in any of the pre-made first aid kits, which are completely garbage, so don't buy one of those. So inside here, a few different things. Number one is steri strips. Steri strips are these little long strips that you cut and you can put it over a wound that's a gaping gash. It'll help to hold it together. So it's almost like a poor man's stitch kit for in the field because unless you have medical training, you shouldn't be stitching anybody up unless you really know what you're doing. It's good to practice stitching. Like if you want to get a suture kit, I have a suture kit at my home kit, but you can get like a piece of chicken or a piece of meat from the store and cut it open and practice your suture technique. They have videos on YouTube. You can learn how to do sutures, but if you're going to be near medical help soon, it's much better to use these steri strips to close up a wound because it doesn't actually cut into the person. Along with the steri strips, this is called benzoin tincture. You put it around the wound, it's just this liquid, and it helps these to stick so they don't come off the skin and they can stay tight because they need to hold tension to hold that wound shut. So I carry a few different sets of these. It's all the same thing. Gorilla glue, this is essential. If you have a gaping wound, let's say that's not too wide, let's say you have a really nasty wound on your foot and you need to hike out and you can't get something like a steri strip to stick on there, Worst case scenario, you can fill a small wound with glue. I'm not recommending this as your first case for medical procedure, but if you're in an emergency scenario and you need to keep a wound shut because that's the only thing that's keeping you from getting out, this can be great. Also, if you have like a cut on your finger or something like that and you can't get a band-aid to stick and it's just hurting you really bad, Gorilla Glue works great. It does not feel good coming out, but if it's a life or death scenario where you need to exit, this can be great. It's also great for repairing gear. I have about 10 band-aids. Band-aids are almost garbage. They do absolutely nothing unless you have a very small wound that you just want to cover up because it's bothering you. Most of the pre-made kits are just covered with band-aids. So you're just basically buying really expensive band-aids. And then I have butterfly bandages. These are like steri strips, but a bit smaller. If you just had one single wound, like a gaping wound that you needed to close up, you can see they're very small, but like an eye cut or something like that, that can be great. So that's all part of my repair kit. And before you do the repair, everything's gotta be clean as we went through with that, perf that first part. The next thing that I have that's dual use is this Ace Wrap. So I like to get the big ones. This is a six inch one. If you get like a four inch one, it doesn't have multiple purpose. So with this six inch one, you can use it over the top of a big wound that's filled with gauze to stop bleeding. So like if you had to big wound in your side. You could wrap this around the whole chest to hold it in place. You can also use it to repair sprained ankles, sprained knees, or anything else. It's very helpful to have. In the home kit, I carry something that's called an Israeli bandage. It's very similar to this, but it has this little strap so you can compress it down. Israeli bandages are great, but they're heavy and they're not multiple use for sprains, so I don't carry them in the backcountry. But they're great for a home kit. I also have those in the checklist. So don't carry a small ace bandage. It's just not gonna do much and it's not multiple use. A six inch one works great. I just carry one of those. And then I have a few more things on this side. I have fabricated chest seals. So if you just take a three mil thick trash compactor bag, not a regular trash bag, but a trash compactor bag, and you cut it into squares. I have a few of these. So you cut it into a square, it's about the same size as the chest seal, and worst case scenario, if somebody has a deep puncture wound, you can put this around the wound and you can tape the edges of it with Gorilla Tape after you clean the edge of the wound. It doesn't have vents in it like this, but if you really need it and you didn't have it, this is nice to have. So you can just cut a few trash compactor bags into six, approximately six inch squares and that can work really well. Next I have is adhesive bandage. So this stuff's great for holding gauze on after you've covered the wound up with some gauze and it's stretchy and it's breathable so it can keep air going into the wound even though it's still covered up. I just keep one roll of that. Last things, pen and paper. Pen and paper is used to write down vital signs. On this checklist that you'll learn when you do wilderness training, there's all these vitals that you need to keep track of. You need to keep track of the time and all the different vitals because you're going to be with the person for a few hours up to a few days and you need to see how they're trending. So you need to see what their pulse rate is. You need to see how their respiratory rate is. You need to see what their temperature is and you need to have a place to write it down. You could do it on a phone, 
But with a phone, you have a failure mode that the phone might lose battery or it might die because it's wet or something like that. So having a pen and paper is good. Gallon freezer bag. This is used for all the bloody stuff that's kept away from everything else. So just keep a gallon freezer bag to put all the dirty, bloody stuff in after you're done. This is tape. And this is padded tape. It works very well for closing up small wounds. Anything that's a big wound, you would use this adhesive tape because you're going to have to wrap a big area around it. But like blisters, small wounds, stuff like that. This is absolute waterproof tape. It's not really waterproof, but you can wear it for a day with sweaty feet and stuff like that. And I'll repair wounds. Inside my home kit, I like to keep a lot heavier duty tape. So in my home kit, I not only keep medical tape, this is just regular sports tape. It's just heavy, so I don't carry it backpacking. And then I keep gorilla tape in my home kit. But this will suffice for the backcountry. This is an essential thing to have. It's called Terrapin Max, and it's for dental repair. So if you chip a tooth, or if a cavity filling comes out, it hurts really bad. I've had this happen before. This is just adhesive that you mix together and then you push it in there so it covers the cavity. I would say that having a cavity um, repair come out or a chipped tooth is just or not more painful than any other stuff that would actually go into your body. And it just continuously just bugs you. So having this super light can repair that. And then I have something that's a bandage to wrap stuff up. So if you need to make a sling for somebody's arm that's broken, you can use a shirt that works really well, or you can use these pre-made. They're very light and small, so I keep one of these. Worst case, if you have two things that need to be put in a sling, you could use a shirt or a coat plus one of these. It's also nice if you needed to stop blood and you're out of your other stuff. So you could use this to stop blood. So that's a whole lot of information to take in at first, but I would recommend just starting small with your backpacking kit that you can carry with you. I carry this with me if I'm going bike riding or if I'm leaving the house anywhere, if I might need to save somebody's life. Always keeping in mind that having the big life threat stuff, chest seal, tourniquet, those are essential to have. Besides head injuries and concussions and shock, these can save more lives than all the rest of this stuff combined. All the rest of the stuff's good, but having these and having some training on how to use them can be a huge asset along with CPR. So start small, like I said, all these are listed out in that checklist that you guys can download for free. I've linked to all the products so you can instantly order them and keep your kit updated. But just start small and work your way into a three-day medical course. You can take it at REI or you can take it at Knowles. And then if you want more, take one of those 10 day courses. I can guarantee you'll learn so much stuff and you'll feel really good being able to help people out if they're in a really bad scenario. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next week.